All right, so um, Christine's not here tonight as the chair, so as the co-chair, I will call the meeting to order. And Debbie, if you want to do roll call, that would be great. All right, Vice Chair Kate Trusta. Here. Monica Johnson is not present. Karen Miller. Here. Cody Phelps. Here. Stephen Young. Here. Thank you. And we have Council Member Jim Woodward. Here. Um, who's with liaison Gary Mansfree is not present. Excused, we have Chair Christine Adams and Mark Husbands. Staff, we have Director Christina Underhill, Open Space Manager Dave Lee, Assistant City Forester Evan Anderson, and Code Enforcement Manager, Manager thank you, Dave Lewis. Awesome. Okay, so we will start off by approving the minutes from our last meeting on March 10th. Are there any changes or corrections, or does somebody want to move the minutes? So moved. Okay, we'll so second. Have a second. 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 All right. Everyone who approves, say aye. 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 And if you aye. don't approve, say nay. Okay. Um, and then we'll just jump into. So it sounds like the minutes are moved. We're good. Um, and then we'll just jump into public comment if we have any. I don't think we do. We do not. Perfect. So moving on to old business. Baker, Cushing, Centennial, and Jason Park construction update. And I'll be giving that. Um, okay. Is regarding the three parks that are under construction, um, there's not been a lot of activity there. Uh, if you drive by Cushing, uh, that's probably got the most activity. They've got some fencing up where the new skate park will be. They've got other fence panels in there. They've moved in dumpsters and some other various equipment, but nothing's really started as of yet other than the mobilization. Uh, same thing for Centennial Park. Um, down there, they've got their construction trailer and a number of boulders, and really nothing's going on up at Baker Park. Uh, but as far as start dates go, Cushing was slated to start on April 13th, which was Wednesday, I believe. <coughs> So they are mobilizing out there. Centennial is supposed to start uh, May 1st, and then Baker follows afterwards on June 1st. Um, but we do have some other news going on. Debbie, if you can throw those photos up. Um, the Plaza <laughs> Pond has started. Uh, they're taking out the bottom of that pond right now, and they've got trucks going in and out. They've diverted the uh, waterway off to the one side. So it's pretty exciting. Well, that's, this is Jason Park. So we'll, oh, there we go. So they've diverted the water off to the left side of that picture. They're taking out the concrete bottom of the pond as we speak and moving a lot of dirt and they've got a lot of heavy equipment out there. So that's, that's the start of some construction. So that one's pretty exciting. And then next Jason Park, this was a grant that we received last year. Um, they've demoed the picnic shelter out there and the restroom. And what you see here is some equipment out where the basketball court will be. They've taken out the old court there and all of the subgrade, and they put in new base in there in anticipation of pouring concrete. My guess is next week at this point for concrete. And then they'll start working on the concrete back where the picnic shelter is for the flooring. So those are the updates for the park areas. One thing I'll add, um, on May 2nd, we're gonna be going to council as part of a budget amendment, a supplemental. Uh, the three park project, Baker Centennial and Cushing, came in um, $125,000 over budget, which was somewhat expected due to rising costs that we're experiencing across the board. Um, and so that's gonna go to the council for approval. We have the funds um, in our, our capital budget. So it's it's not taken from the city's unassigned fund balance, but it's needed, unfortunately, for some of the costs. I think electrical utility came in quite 130,000 almost over anticipated costs. So from what they budgeted, so it's little stuff like that that just, it's killing our budget, but it's not as bad as we anticipated. So 125,000 over. Any questions on the park renovations? Uh, 
And then I'm wondering, um, do you have to leave early or were you going to be late? No, I, I was going to be late at my mock scenario went. Oh. Literally. Well, I wonder if we should bump you first since you're our guest and then we'll cover the rest. Yeah, that works for me. All right, cool. In terms of old business, that sounds like it wrapped up. Uh, for new business, we're going to start with our off-leash program first quarter update, and we're going to give it to Officer Dave Lewis. Thanks. I always like coming, as you know, to this um, to this body and presenting uh, materials, and this has been now going on on year three, and we're seeing um, what the policy how the policy is playing out and what the city uh, is doing in response to some changes in policy. And this has been a very unusual year. Um, I wanted to go ahead and break all of our calls for service down by park. Um, these are actually documented reports and a documented report is when a code officer, park ranger, animal welfare officer, um, this does not capture police. So if police were called to the park, this does not capture that. This is where we had to take some type of an action, whether it's doing an extra patrol and we take some kind of um, uh, action such as education regarding off leash. Uh, uh, we call it at large. I know for the purpose of this, it's, it's uh, off leash. Um, whether it's a park rules violation, uh, which are numerous, as you all know, uh, we actually capture that data in a in a official police report and that's where you're seeing this this data come from i can tell you that this particular month we've been very busy with the crossover and the nice weather um, that a third of our documented reports so far this month have been park related um, as many of you guys know we are still in the pilot program the first initial year of our park ranger um, we unfortunately have not had consistency with staff due to a variety of reasons that uh, the rest of the community is experiencing in the country and we're currently hiring for a new park ranger our former park ranger um, moved into a vacant code officer slot and is still covering 50 percent um, park duties with that being said i've also taken on personal responsibility at our parks um, and you'll see me more frequently in our parks we also act as a deterrent um, most of our, all of our officers are now equipped to work remotely, just like the police department. We're all assigned um, remote computers, cell phones, um, uplinks to our database. And so you'll frequently see a code officer. They may just be sitting in their truck. Um, that is a visible deterrent. Um, it's been proven with specific police practices. We'll sit there and we'll do our paperwork and do our reports um, just to let people know that, yes, we are in the community. We are out here in the parks and we are, are doing patrols. Um, our hours are varied. Um, most of us do have don't have set schedules, and so you may see us at a variety of different hours. We have only issued one summons. We really we really pride ourselves on the educational aspect of uh, the enforcement phase. Um, An education could be as simple as uh, providing information regarding um, safe behaviors uh, on leash, uh, what the rules are, where people can visit to have off-leash privileges um, to giving them a formal warning. Uh, the summons that was issued was done at uh, Centennial Park, and uh, I was the one that actually issued that summons to a known habitual offender who has been warned multiple times. And so it did uh, rise to the level of issuing them a court summons uh, to, to meet me in court to answer the charges of at-large and no proof readings. any questions about Dave, I got a question that? for you. What, what Hi, are you getting Steve. on Canine Corral? Sorry, I, I'm dealing with a teething child. I don't think you want to see a screaming child next to me, so I'm leaving the video off for now. But um, what are you getting Canine Corral? Am I just, do you guys normally have calls out there, or have I just been missing a stat? So Canine Corral is very unusual in that most of them, a majority of those that may be involved in an incident, do not report. Um, it, it is some unspoken rule between dog owners that if a, a, a situation occurs, they typically don't report, they exchange information. We may hear about it through social media. We may hear about it because, oh, so-and-so agreed, party one agreed to pay for the vet, vet bills of party two. We're now three weeks after the incident and they're calling to report it because they're not getting paid for their medical bills. Um, we are doing more 
my team has been out doing spot checks. Um, we're making sure that people are following the rules of being um, leashed uh, to and from their vehicles. We're verifying rabies vaccination. If they do not have rabies vaccination or proof, we do ask them um, to not participate for the day until they can prove some type of um, rabies vaccination. Uh, and we also look at the behaviors of the dogs. And if anything is uh, aggressive, um, then we do ask them to not participate. We also look for puppies that are underage. We don't basically just following all of the, the protocols that are set for Cane and Corral. So those are the things that we're evaluating. And those are really what's being captured here um, is those extra patrols. And we've started increasing those. We've seen a tremendous drain on the resources there uh, with the nice weather um, in a lot of participants. And so we're really wanting to try and be present and mitigate uh, any potential conflicts that may occur and spread of disease. Gotcha. Great okay, question. thank you. So I have a question too. I mean, I feel like this is the first quarter report kind of after all of the changes and the things that we put in place, like the fencing. So have we noticed or have you noticed that any of those things like the fencing in the various parks and the quadrants that we created, do you think it's helping with the off leash issue or helping people like understand what parts of the park are for off leash and are not and things like that? Um, so this has been a learning curve for yeah. everybody in the community and city staff. Uh, it has put a little bit of a strain having Jason Park out of the mix right. and those people uh, going to Duncan or the Northwest Greenbelt. We have seen an increase in the Northwest Greenbelt usage. Yeah, I see this. Uh, we've also run into some unusual trends where we're finding some of the uh, rogue um, folks who do not want to participate in off-leash privileges at those designated areas going to specific parks. And so we're very in tune to those um, circumstances and we're we're actively patrolling some of the smaller pocket park yeah, parks. Definitely. I was going to say like this Bard Park with 14 incidents this last month. That's really interesting because that's right by my house. And it's literally like I would I don't even know if I would consider it a full on park like it's so little, but that seems like a lot of things going on there. That was one of there. the trends that we found and yeah. identified. And so um, we're very data driven um, at the police department and with code enforcement. And so when we start seeing a trend in an area, we will move our resources to um, move to that area. So whether it's a, an ongoing generated complaint such as um, waste or something at Centennial or we recently had a meeting with, uh, regarding off leash at Duncan Park and the, the communication or miscommunication that seemed to have occurred between uh, off-leash privilege users and youth sports and who has priority and so uh, we're being very clear yeah. the city is being very clear with its messaging social media wise as well as posting additional signage so that people understand this is reserved it's closed not just for the off-leash right. privileged hours yeah. but for when it's in use yeah. perfect cool yeah this is really this is interesting to see because there's definitely some parks on here that i'm like romans 10 really like okay <laughs> i didn't know that that one was Maybe a hot park, but we'll have to keep our eye on it. I think that has to do with the apartments right there. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of dogs going to the school also. Mm -hmm. I live right over by Maddox. Mm -hmm. And since Jason's been closed, I'm noticing. And they have signs that yeah. you're not supposed to have dogs on school property, but it doesn't seem to work. <laughs> and we have been that. asked. Uh, occasionally by schools to do some extra patrols. That's not an area that we typically yes, enforce. Yes, I, am, I understand. But um, it's just, we, I'm very close to Maddox mm -hmm. and literally the string of dogs that go by my house mm -hmm. is just phenomenal anymore. Yeah, and, and most animals are permitted when, when it's outside school hours to be on a leash to visit, um, but not to be off leash. Yeah. Cool. Um, I wanted, if you have no more questions about this, I just wanted to give you another couple of Yeah. If that's okay. Yeah. Um, so the city, that especially at the police department, values uh, training and education. And so the, um, all of our team has been recertified by the Bureau of Animal Protection um, Department of Agriculture. So we're all certified, commissioned in statewide agents. There's only 80 in the state of Colorado. and. Um, four of them, five of them happen to be here in the city of Inglewood. So I'm very proud that we continue with that. Um, second, we're staying uh, apprised of any um, zoonotic concerns regarding rabies transmission. 
<clears throat> and yesterday we attended a, an in-depth briefing and training regarding the avian flu virus that is going on. And we are setting in um, place certain protocols should we have the magic numbers three, three or more um, birds that are suspected to have died. Um, it triggers a whole chain of events that um, code enforcement parks, Department of Wildlife and um, Tri-County Health that's now moving to the health department. Um, code enforcement is also sitting in uh, as one of the stakeholders regarding uh, zoonotics and a few other um, aspects as the new health department is formed. Um, so we're taking an active role in that as well. Um, so I thought all of you would be interested in that. And today we participated in a mock um, disaster scenario uh, where we uh, decontaminated dogs. So we actually train like it would happen in real life. We have props, we have real people, we have victims. And so today that's where I was training in a mock disaster. Love it. Sounds like it was fun. It was. <laughs> awesome. Any other questions for Officer Lewis? Cool. All right. Then we will move on to, we were doing C, so we're going to go back to number A, letter A, not number A, Community Forestry Program, um, Evan Anderson, Assistant <coughs> City Forester. Okay, that's mine. Um, I'm very pleased to introduce Evan Anderson over here. Evan comes from Sam Houston State University before here, where he was the Assistant Director of Landscape. And then before that role, he was the urban forester for the university. Um, he was also a utility arborist for Arbor Metrics. Uh, Evan holds a master's degree in tropical environmental management from Charles Darwin University and a bachelor's in forestry management from Stephen Austin State University in Texas. So Evan will be part of the community forestry program that we've implemented this year, which is a subsidy for Inglewood citizens, households, uh, up to $500 or 25% of the total cost for either ash tree treatment or ash tree removal, depending on the condition of the ash tree. So we're starting that in earnest this month as well. And he's also going to be updating our um, tree inventory, which has been lacking over the last couple of years. He's already done a bang up job on that and he's going to work to improve park and in, in, in the public trees. Um, he's going to lead our Arbor Day uh, going forward and he coordinates volunteers for the and the memorial tree plantings. So I'd like to welcome Evan and if you have anything or just want to say thank nice you. to thank you Dave. Uh, yeah, this is my third week and it's been a, a great three weeks so far. Um, getting out, seeing the parks, uh, looking at the, the great things and some of the not so great things about some of the trees up there. And uh, the application should be live here shortly. It's going to be uh, a form on a web page where residents can download it and email it in or print it out and mail it or bring it over uh, to apply for the subsidy. And then we'll go out and visit the site and, and uh, look at their tree and make the best decision that we can for the for the, the <coughs> and for the city. So, like you probably all heard, it's a it's a it's a storm that's on the horizon. And when it comes, I think it's 16 percent of the trees in the parks are ash, and then another huge percentage in the city on private property. Um, and you've probably been educated before about how it just absolutely decimates your urban forestry canopy. So I'm looking forward to being out in front of that. And it's really great to be part of a program that is um, being proactive instead of reactive. Most municipalities are very reactive to uh, tree issues. So it's really great to be out in front of something for once. So I'm really looking forward to getting started. Awesome. Well, welcome. Glad to have you here. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Anyone... <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Evan? I have one, obviously. Um, so for this application, is it going to be online or how are we going to be sharing it with people in the community? I'm just thinking about some of our like older residents that maybe aren't so tech savvy. Yes. Um, how can we make sure that they can get it too? So they can get it a few different ways. 
one way would be to download it mm -hmm. from the web page, and then uh, the next way would be to pick it up okay, from right. either this building or the rec center or any other city building yes. where we have them of a paper copy. Love that. Um, and then they can email it or drop it off or physically mail it. Awesome. Um, and if there's somebody that needs a special arrangement, then we can adjust it, even maybe picking it up or something for somebody who maybe isn't very mobile. Awesome. But the important thing is getting, doing some outreach, making sure people know it exists. Yeah. Because we have a very small period of time where we can do treatment when it's still effective. We want to use those dollars very wisely. Definitely. So. Awesome. Thank you. Are we going to be doing some sort of advertising program for that and yeah. putting up flyers or something like that? I'm thinking specifically addressing seniors, mm -hmm. Mally Center. Well, you can talk about the tree wraps. That's that's yes, one so, way there's QR codes on there. Yeah, so there's yeah. some tree wraps I'm going to be putting out in city parks. And then there has been some outreach material already made with the communications team here. And I'm working with them now to make sure we're hitting all the different angles, social media, bulletin boards, uh, going to the senior center, trying to grab everybody at once. It's kind of difficult, but uh, we're going to give it a shot. So, and any suggestions would be appreciated for maybe some blind spots that we, we have. Definitely. Cool. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Then we will move on to our, I think it's our last item under new business, golf course rates. Director Underhill. Yeah. So um, part of the budget last year rolling into 2023 um, we raised our rates at Brook and T by like one and two dollars, depending on what it was. And um, kind of talking about our park renovations and going over budget, we are finding that costs for the golf course and for our parks are increasing substantially. And so there's been talk to be able to sustain to raise rates again and, and only do it June, July, and August during a high season. Many courses do this. Coming from Arizona, I saw it all the time. You pay in the summertime 50 bucks to play around, and then in the wintertime it goes up to $175 or $200 plus. We're not going to go that big. <laughs> um, but Broken Tea, we just got this information today, so we're still kind of analyzing it. But what they're asking is it looks like, again, to do a, a rate increase for 18 hole, 9 hole uh, carts, and even impacting uh, the driving range bucket of balls, $1 and $2 again. Um, and so it's not substantial. However, it looks like it will increase their revenue. Um, they're projecting 137,000, almost $138,000 for the year. Sounds like a lot, but we are dra draining the capital budget that we have for Broken Tea um, at $1.9 million to renovate the back nine irrigation system. And so we need to start building that capital back up because there's other major improvements needed to the course. Um, to the clubhouse, things like that. So I wanted to present this. Um, Marty, who oversees the maintenance piece of the golf course, did an analysis on just goods um, that he's purchasing. And one major, and the park sees this too, is um, increases in the grass seed. Last year he paid $10,000 for grass seed, and this year it's coming in at $21,000 for the same amount of seed. It's, it's just insane. So um, so that's the proposal. We want to get the commission's blessing. Um, we're trying to figure out if it actually has to go to council and our municipal code. It doesn't say anything about that. Um, but I'll talk to the city manager on Monday to see what next steps need to occur because we'd like to implement this ju uh, June 1st. And like I said, just run it till the end of August to help revenue. Um, we've had a slow start at the golf course. Mar um, January and February, of course, was closed due to snow. So pretty much zero revenue came in. We had a little bit at the driving range, but nothing like we've seen in years past. So we're already starting behind <laughs> for the season. So we hope to catch up with the nicer weather and the forecast and all that. Any questions? Another big one, too, is fuel surcharges. Anything that gets delivered out there, we take a hit on that. Uh, equipment. We're looking at two years lead time for 
for equipment that we need this year and they won't guarantee the price they give you a price this year but they'll tell you we don't know what it'll be in two years from now but it will be more so there's a lot of that factor going on as well yeah the mowers this is interesting so a mower in 2021 eighty-seven thousand dollars for two units this year it's a hundred and thirty two thousand dollars that's a significant increase yeah do they think that's just like because of like the supply chain issues like things can't get manufactured right now pretty much oh, demand and sucks. supply yeah Our, all our carts are electric now, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Right. And we can't get golf carts. Another one's either. Yeah. No problems getting golf carts. So, do we, as a commission, need to vote on that then, or do we just tell you yes? I, yeah. If you guys want to vote, just are you okay with yeah with this happening? Um, again, it'll be okay. temporary. We will look at in the twenty twenty three budget probably. What we're proposing for the summer months staying the same for 2023 but increasing the summer rates also next year we're gonna have to it's just yeah. costs are gonna go up i don't see costs coming down anytime soon i wish but right yeah, it's not promising did we have this rate increase previously earlier this year here yeah yeah, yeah okay. year. every other year we do every a rate increase yeah well i was thinking that i had seen but something this is, this is in addition to that in addition yeah. to okay all right so then um as a commission let's just take a vote as or do we need to say like someone moves it someone seconds it and then vote how formal do we need to be okay you tell me i'm I, first time you guys. Yes. <laughs> i think just Yays and nays. <laughs> I don't know if we well, have it's a little more formal if you do a motion That's and true. second. So that okay. actually puts it in the minutes. Yes. There you go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So then, um, does anybody motion um, increasing the rates at the golf course that for the summer months um, to kind of just help with costs? So moved. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in those in favor say aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. All of those opposed, Aye. please say no, nay. All right. Approved. Thank you for that. Yeah. We're still a cheap golf course, I'll put it that way. We did a great comparison to other courses, and we're still right in line, even with the rates. So yeah. I have a feeling all courses, you're going to see a bump up the prices. I think that prices everywhere on everything are just going to go up. Inflation. It's just what's going on these days. All right, cool. Um, that concludes new business, I believe. So we will move on to staff's choice. Yeah, anything else? Um, parks is out, uh, opening up bathrooms, turning on irrigation systems. So we're busy with a lot of the, the spring type work, cleaning up, sprucing up. Um, Really, that's about it. Okay. Um, what I've got is we had the um, extremely spring. Ah, what's this name? Extremely spring. Extravaganza. Events. Uh, this last Saturday, the 9th, and we had about 1,500 people come out to the event. We did four egg hunts for the different age groups, and it was a really nice event. The weather held out nicely. Did you make it over? No. Okay. We saw some of the council members over there. Right. There's a lot of people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a really great event that kicked off our event season. And then on May 7th, it'll be, be b before this meeting next month, um, is the Celebrate Inglewood event at Denny Miller Field in the police department. So it's touch a truck, lots of vendors, food. Um, and that's from 10 to 2 on Saturday, May 7th. And we are hiring across the board in our parks department. Obviously, Pirates Cove is recruiting heavily for lifeguards right now. Most positions have been filled there except lifeguards. We still need quite a few of those. Golf course is hiring. Rec centers are hiring. So if you know anybody looking for a job, uh, hiring start age is 15, especially for lifeguards. So. Yep, we're looking for people. And we have quite a few full-time positions to open a lot in the library. Um, we've got an aquatic supervisor that's open currently. Actually, I think that just closed. So we're seeing a little bit of turnover, but that's not always a bad thing. It's kind of expected with um, what we've seen across the nation over this last couple of years of just people resigning, looking for different opportunities. 
that one. Are you going to mention the joint council commission? Oh, yeah. On uh, April 25th, so that's uh, a Monday night, uh, this commission, along with our library board, is invited um, to the, the council meeting that evening to go over capital projects. And typically for this board, um, it's been pretty standard with our open space funds and um, conservation trust funds and the projects that we delegate through that uh, for our capital projects. So if you're able to attend that, you are all invited. I think there's a link to be uh, virtual or you can also attend in person for that. And I believe it starts at 6 p.m. 6 o'clock yep. study session, right? Correct. Yep. 25th. So the community room, if people want to show up in person, it's on the second floor. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Anything else for staff's choice? Okay. We're just moving through. Commissioner's choice then. I'm going to start with Cody because he's right here next to me. All right. Uh, I did get a chance to go to the spring extravaganza. My wife and I stopped by towards the end, so most of the activity was already uh, finished up people were starting to, to break down but um, still quite a bit of activity going on and, and even just down the hill down by the the water there was lots of families picnicking and um, enjoying the nice weather um, it, it looked like everybody was having a great time and um, so it was really fun that was one of my first Inglewood events because we haven't had much in the last uh, couple of years um, so that was Fun to see, and I look forward to uh, May 7th, trying to swing by to that. And I've been looking at the calendar and the concerts, I think, in July and, and everything else coming up this year. So um, I think these are great ways to get everybody back out to the community and, um, and you know, just get everybody engaged. So. Awesome. Okay. All right, Steve, technically you're next because I'm going around the circle and the screen is next. So it's you. Okay. Uh, I've got a quick question for Dave and Christina. Um, I live in the Bates Logan area and there is a, a lot of interest in the people that I've kind of mentioned like, hey, they're looking to to kind of redo Bates Logan a little bit. Do you guys have a, kind of an ETA when you're either going to announce or propose that? Because there's a, quite a few of my neighbors who want to weigh on city council and give their uh, support for it. Oh. Well, so uh, Dave and staff just submitted a grant for Bates Logan, which will determine the timeline. If we're successful in getting a half a million dollars from the Rapaho County Open Space Grant Program, um, next year we'd be able to renovate the, so the restroom and the picnic Pavilion. shelter. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, we have, we're currently, or we did do a design with public feedback. We had an open house. For the whole park to get ideas of what the park could become and be renovated and so that timeline is a little bit more extended depending on funding um, so if if we go for a bond in 2023 that would accelerate the renovations for uh, many of our parks pirates cove and the rec center uh, to see some great improvements occur if we get the additional funding so okay. steve that would look at everything from irrigation to new trails or sidewalks within the park, uh, new basketball court, pickleball court, a little uh, pump track. Um, what else is in there? Playground. Playground. Yeah, I forgot the playground. Yeah, I remember awesome. seeing the design and everyone was really excited about it. I just didn't know if when it goes forward to city council, whether that pe if people wanted to be there, if there was like a, if it's not going to be really until 2023, then I guess they have time to prepare. So, yeah. <laughs> so the grant is awarded in August, right? Correct. Yeah. It's actually due tomorrow. I, I submitted it today. Ooh. Fingers crossed, everybody. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, Bates Logan is a very loved park, so I'm not surprised to hear that people are interested in what's going on there. All right, Karen, do you have anything for us this evening? I will be attending my first Mally Trust. Yay! Yay! On behalf <laughs> of this commission. <laughs> Otherwise, you. no. Awesome. Well, thank you. Can't wait to hear how it goes. Yeah, you too. <laughs> All right, uh, Jim. Uh, I have. I don't have anything tonight. Okay. I, I have one thing to talk to Christina about okay. afterwards, but nothing for tonight. Okay. 
Okay. I think one thing I want to add, not staff choice, but just future commission meetings. You guys still good on going off site to check out the parks? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Um, the first one, uh, maybe Pirates Cove in June. June yeah. 9th is the volunteer appreciation night that you all get invited to as commissioners. So the thought would be, and I talked to Brad who oversees Pirates Cove. It looks like we can utilize a space over there if we want to actually meet over there for the commission meeting prior to the event. So if you want to stay for the event, you can. Um, if you're all up for that, getting out of this place and going out somewhere fun. Um, and then probably July, depending on how construction's going, we can meet at one of those parks, depending on the status of where things are at. And then August probably do the same thing. So do some offsite visits. You know, I do have one thing. Okay. With the strategic plan this year that has been approved now under sustainability, it was um, suggested and council adopted that the parks, parks and recreation look at doing more plants and that sort of thing as opposed to turf around the perimeter of the parks. And I have suggested, well, okay, that to, to that's something that needs to come to the Parks and Rec Commission. So if, if that's something that staff starts working on, it's going to come to the commission and for suggestions and recommendations. So that's what that's about. And are we thinking more of like um, like perennial type plants in certain areas versus grass or would it be like more annuals? Because I know we've kind of talked about some of the features in the parks in the past and how we've had to do planting every single year versus like doing more. Well, I would think it would probably be more like depot park and what they've, mm -hmm. you the know, what they've yeah, there that's so nice. with perennials yeah. and, you know, some native type things and things like that. But I think that's up to staff. Yeah. I'm not the one to address that. Okay. For sure. I just wanted to make sure it got to Parks and Recreation. Definitely. Yeah. So. It's actually called out in the plan that it's coming to you all. So okay. as soon as those those sort of things start, I think it's going to happen more when we look at renovating parks, um, you know, and updating the landscaping. Medians are going to be a big one, and that's something parks overseas and not doing the heavy water plants right. in, the, in the medians. Where are we going to? fill the medians with, with concrete. concrete yeah are we not doing that anymore the talk has been on santa fe possibly doing okay. that because the maintenance perspective of santa fe trying to maintain plants yeah. along that major that's, thoroughfare yeah doesn't make a lot of sense but um along hampton that's been updated recently broadway um just sprucing those up so they're yeah. colorful but also low water as we all know irrigation doesn't last forever uh, the system doesn't and so it gets quite costly to maintain over time I don't know if anybody's seen, but Aurora and I believe Denver are looking into paying people to pick pull sod out and plant more xeric landscapes. Really? Um, it's coming. I mean, it's it's been in, in Arizona and Nevada. It's starting to show in California as well. And with our extended drought, I think yeah. you're going to see more of an impetus on water conservation and less bluegrass. Yeah, the golf course has already started doing more native areas versus turf areas yeah. to cut back on the irrigation costs and all that. Cool. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for the update on that, Jim. We will stay tuned for more discussions in the future, I'm sure. And that comes to me, and I don't have anything for us this evening. So if that's it, then I think we can call it adjourned. All right. All right. Unless anyone has anything else. No? All right, that's it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys later. Bye, Steve. See Bye, ya. Steven.